writing the book was actually the process of figuring out how I identified in relation to Taiwan and, and what my relationship was because we didn't spend a lot of time there when I was growing up. Um, and my parents, you know, my family never really explained why that was to me. And so sort of doing that as an adult was a huge process of figuring that out. Um, but, you know, we grew up, you know, my, my grandparents being white from Ren, my mom growing up under martial law, we sort of had these phrases that I grew up with, which was, you know, Taiwan, the true China, or we're Chinese, but from Taiwan, and sort of figuring out ways of, of sort of negotiating that. And I realized through working on the book that that, that language is inadequate for me, and it fits me. It, it, Um, so I had, I grew up in Canada and my family had moved to Canada from Taiwan. My mom's side of the family had moved to Taiwan in the 70s. Um, and I didn't really know much about it growing up. I didn't know much about um, their side of the family and we didn't have any anyone else. It was just my grandparents and my mom, as far as I knew. <laughs> um, and so I had spent a really long time sort of not not questioning this and then when i when i grew up and i became an adult um i started to ask you know ask more questions i think as as most of us would um and my grandfather um gong he he developed alzheimer's when i was a teenager and over time you know he he forgot who i was but also one of the big things was that he forgot language and so you know he could he could still speak mandarin uh, pretty well for a long time, but you know, much earlier he lost English, and it meant that we we had a huge sort of gap in communication. So it left me with a lot of questions about you know who he was and his life and his story. Um, and then yeah, so I had been thinking about trying to you know trying to find out more about their history, about their lives for years. Um, and I tried sort of in my early twenties to write. Um, you know, I did recordings with my grandmother, tried to write their story and, and learn more about it, but I, I kept failing to sort of figure out how to tell the story of their lives. Um, you know, they had, they were both from China originally, they're Waishang and, and they, they went to Taiwan and then went on to Canada. And I just, I really couldn't find a way into the story. So I, I put it away <laughs> and sort of put it in a drawer, you know, proverbially on my computer, put it in a folder and set it aside and said, okay, maybe one day I'll revisit this. And then in 2016, when my poor, my grandmother, when she died, um, we found in her house, I mean, tons of stuff that she had been keeping and keeping from us. But um, the big thing was that we found a, a letter that was written by my grandfather um, as he was developing Alzheimer's and it was a memoir of his life. And it told the story from his childhood um, up until sort of the years he was in Taiwan. And it was just kind of this blessing in a way. It was a, a really mysterious sort of letter because it didn't always actually, you know, make sense. It made repetitions. There were gaps um, because he was he was ill when he wrote it. But it was just more than I I had ever known about him. So my mom gave this to me, and that for me was a really amazing invitation to sort of reopen that folder of, of trying to tell their story. Um, and and you know, by this time I was I was working as a writer. I had written my first book, um, and I write about landscape and nature and place. And so it sort of made sense to me. Um, that that would be my way into the story was to sort of, you know, tell their sort of biographical story alongside my own connection to place in, in the place that they called home in the end, which was Taiwan. And it's, it's largely a story about migration and what home means, uh, particularly for people who move through so many different places and who don't entirely belong everywhere they go. Um, so, you know, it's about, about that question of, of, of home and belonging. Um, it's also, you know, what I tried to achieve with the book was to tell a story of not just family, but of, you know, like if you were to scale that up, how are our family stories tied to lot, like larger political events and historical events and also environmental change. Um, so th the book sort of plays on all of those themes. So I spend a lot of time in the book climbing up mountains or going bird watching and, um, you know, hiking through forests and then tying that back to this story of sort of my family search for home and connection with place. Um, so alongside being sort of the family story, in a way it's a story of, of Taiwan's history, it's environmental history, it's colonization repeatedly by so many, uh, so many groups and a story of language and how language shapes our experience in place. I don't wanna say that all sort of migration stories are universal, 
uh, there's a sort of common feeling, I think, for many people who leave a home behind and try to make a new one. And in my in my family's case, you know, across sort of three generations, it's happened so many times, and I've moved myself. Um, and so I think, you know, for me, the book was really an exercise in saying we can find a sort of sense of belonging that is plural and that includes many places. And we do that by getting to know the land, by getting to know the language, by, you know, creating memories on a place and, and feeling like we can go back and maybe know our way around a little bit. And that that's a kind of fluency, right? It's, it's, it's a kind of belonging. Um, you know, for me, people often ask, you know, well, what are you? Are you, are you Canadian? Are you British? Are you Taiwanese? And I, my answer is I, I'm not going to choose between those, right? Like we can be multiple and we don't have to make those choices, um, particularly sort of in the wake of so much migration. It's really important that we make space for that. Um, I picked a passage uh, to read from the second chapter of the book. Um, and it's uh, it's set in, in Kunding <laughs> with my mom on the beach. Okay. Um, I watched her skittering from incoming waves like a sandpiper searching for clams and saw something of the past in her. In Taiwan, though so much change, my mother became a person with a topographic history, a person set into the scene which she believed she belonged in. In my childhood, I never saw that in her. In 40 years of life in Canada, she never rooted to the place and got lost easily. On her commutes in rush hour traffic, she did not stray from her prescribed path. But on the beach, I realized she'd carried something of the island in her the entire time, molecularly, absorbed the way water swells beneath the skin. Tracing her way across the shore, she worked the place into her bones once more. Struggle, right? Like when I got to know Taiwan sort of through my family's stories, it was always just sort of a little bit hollow. It didn't, it didn't, you know, come to life in the way that it, it did when I actually arrived in Taiwan for the first time. You know, I think for me, one of the things I really like about Taiwan is that it puts me in this position of being very inexpert. I'm not fluent. Um, my way around and figure out okay well where am I going what am I doing and I, I really like that sort of overwhelming quality in a way um, I find yeah I find Taipei to be a really lovely city it's um, how do I put it it's more laid back than most big cities of its size I think um, but for me you know Taiwan is is just about you know getting out into the mountains getting out into nature um, being able to sort of see the big skies and you know the the line of the mountains across the horizon it's it's magical um yeah i think often about you know if i had kids how i would tell them i, I think i would just have to take them to taiwan but for someone who has never been i i feel like i would say it's a place with more layers and more complexity than than you could imagine it's not straightforward right taiwan is so multicultural in many ways um there's so many languages there's such a sort of wealth of of community that's really special. Um, and you also see, you know, not just in the people, but in the land, there's so much complexity. You know, it's so biodiverse. There's such a range of different kinds of landscapes you can you can see and explore in Taiwan. And that for me, I think is really special because it's, you know, there's no simple answer to what Taiwan is. And you sort of have to go and just embrace that complexity, um, you know, which, which Taiwanese people have done, right? They've really embraced one another and embraced that sort of you know, many layered quality of, of the history. So um, yeah, that's what I would say is <laughs> go and explore it and then, you know, get to know it. And, you know, people are really friendly. That's, that's the best part. <laughs>